Michelle, uh, is everybody seeing political ad sleuth on your computer screens? Yes. Yes. Okay, super. <laughs> All right, so um, what we are going to do here is um, just uh, start our conference. And um, uh, I would say um, because I'm a, a pretty much of a, a ready talk newbie, um, and I think we can be fairly polite and quiet. Uh, you don't need to worry too much about muting your phones. If it becomes a problem, I'll let everybody know. Um, but uh, please feel free to butt in with questions. Uh, just to uh, remind everybody, this is uh, a webinar. Uh, I scheduled it for an hour and a half in case there are a lot of questions. I think we can probably get through uh, much uh, more quickly than that. But, uh, what this is, and I really want to thank all of you who are participating, uh, I am going to show you Political Ad Sleuth, which is a tool that we are going to use as part of a larger project in Philadelphia um, that will really try to capture uh, and analyze or make analyzable the media landscape leading up to this fall's election. Uh, we think because of some government decisions and some technology that's been developed here at the Sunlight Foundation and at the Internet Archive, we are going to be able to do a much more uh, sophisticated or make tools available to do for scholars and journalists and citizen journalists and just plain citizens uh, to, to understand uh, the kind of propaganda that you're being exposed to at election time. Uh, I've been a longtime political reporter myself. Uh, there's nothing wrong with these messages uh, as long as you understand who is delivering them and what the agenda behind them are. And sometimes uh, the groups that are active in these um, ad campaigns deliberately uh, obscure their identities. And so what we're trying to do is get underneath that. So the reason the Sunlight Foundation uh, got involved in uh, cataloging uh, political advertisements is, as many of you know, uh, after the 2010 Supreme Court decision in Citizen United, uh, we have seen a proliferation of groups that are incorporated as social welfare nonprofits. So they are 501Cs. And um, they do not have to register with the Federal Election Commission, uh, which is the organization that was set up after Watergate to, um, to make campaign finance more transparent. So we are missing transparency for an awful lot of spending that's going on in the elections. The one, there is one place, though, that these groups leave a paper trail, and that is at the local television stations where they buy advertisements. And two years ago, after a very lengthy fight, legal fight, the Federal Communications Commission successfully uh, mandated that uh, TV stations in the 50 largest markets in the country, which of course includes Philadelphia, uh, uh, begin filing uh, their ad buys online. Uh, now initially, it was only the top four uh, broadcast affiliates, so stations affiliated with ABC, CBS, Fox, and NBC. But uh, two years after, so this summer, the FCC expanded that order, and now we have all of the TV stations in all of the markets across the country uh, putting their ad buys online. By doing that, uh, they have made it possible for technologists like the uh, folks I work with at the Sunlight Foundation to access those files and to make them searchable and sortable uh, in ways that I'm going to show you. So, the page you're looking at now is the entry portal for our tool that uh, ingests all of the TV ad buys that are uploaded by the Federal Communications Commission. Now, if you go onto the Federal Communications Commission site, you have to search station by station. So you would look for KYW and you would open it up and then you would see some files and you would start to look. But the disadvantage of that, of course, is most of us want to know about more than just one station. We want to be able to compare. We want to know, are they buying in all the stations in my market? Are they buying in all the stations in my state? So that's what this tool really allows us to do. So 
uh, somebody named me, what committee are you interested in? Is there a big committee you're interested in uh, in your state? Does somebody want to volunteer a name? Okay, hearing none, I'm going to enter the governor's name, Corbett, and see what we find. So as you can see, uh, we are seeing a lot of ads here. I know there's a little bit of a delay, so I'm going to talk slowly. But what I'm seeing is 455 results for Corbett. And as you can see, the first couple are in Philadelphia. Um, so is anybody, is everybody seeing that? If not, uh, email me. Um, and we can filter this. We could filter this by start date, end date. If we wanted to just see results in the last month, we could do that uh, by filling in um, 2014, um, 06, 01 to today. Actually, what I would do is I would go ahead because a lot of these buys are um, forward looking. So many, many, as you will see, many, many campaigns have already bought all the way through the fall. So that narrows it down. Uh, we can see that Tom Corbett was advertising early during the primary campaign, but now we have just, <coughs> excuse me, the buys um, that are going uh, from June through the end of the election. And we got a little bit of information here which tells us uh, who the advertiser is, the file, the station. These dates are not necessarily correct. Uh, you're going to be entering data that will correct them. What this, these will be because we can see here status summarized. That means a good old committee of 70 volunteer has already opened that file and summarized the data for us. So we know that this particular buy was going to start, the, average, the ads were going to start on the 11th of July, and they're still running. They're running through July 20th on station WCAU, okay? Um, sometimes you're going to see ads that aren't summarized, and those are the ones we want you to open up and look at. And as you can see, somebody's actually been very ambitious and gone through and summarized even the ads across the state <clears throat> in Pittsburgh. So any questions so far? Nope. No. Uh, yeah, but you're also going to see advertisers who are buying nationally. So I am guessing, because I think I've seen this, that this group, the American Petroleum Institute, uh, for those of you who don't know, is the major trade association for the large uh, uh, multina multinational and some domestic too, some strictly domestic, but it is the major trade association for the oil and gas industry. So they do a lot of buys, as you can see. And as you can see, they're buying all over the country. Uh, I'm scrolling down the page now, and hopefully you'll begin to see this, Winston-Salem, Washington, D.C., Youngstown, Ohio, and as I scroll down the page, I am going to start to see on the left-hand side a section called states. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that the state that American Petroleum Institute, or API, as we inside the Beltway people call it, uh, they've been most active in Ohio. But Pennsylvania is there, and I am now going to filter these results for just Pennsylvania. So I clicked on Pennsylvania, or you can use the drop-down menu to pick it, and now I am seeing the 38 buys that are just in Pennsylvania. Okay, so here I see an ad, at the very top, we see an ad, uh, a f the flight date, that, as they call it, flight means the when the ads are, it's a term of art in TV world, and it means when the ads are running. And so the first one I can see is summarize. So I know that a volunteer has already gone in and summarized that particular ad. The second ad at WPVI-TV in Philly has not been loaded yet. And as you can see, 
the contract dates don't make much sense. I mean, it's possible they just bought one day's worth of ad, ads, but probably not. So what you see when the ad has not been summarized, the data there is, is being pulled off of what is called metadata. So it's just the data that's attached to the file as it comes into the FCC. And sometimes, and it really varies from station to station, sometimes it's very useful. It has the name of the advertiser attached to it. Sometimes it's not. You know, I've seen stations where uh, this field under the column that says file, where it, it says for this ad, non-candidate issue ads, American Petroleum Institute, it might just say contract September or tracked September. So uh, sometimes that metadata is more useful than others. And one of the reasons it's really important for us to enter these ads is it allows us, if this said just track September, it wouldn't show up under American Petroleum Institute. So we'd be missing an ad that we'd want to look for. So what I'm going to do here, uh, just to start out, is open this ad. And what I've done, I, I've already violated my rule. I'm going to go back. I'm going to show you the workflow that works for me. Um, when you are done with this, uh, I believe I will have your email addresses, but if not, I would like you all to email me so that I can add you to our political ad sleuth uh, listserv. And what we are using that for, it's a group email uh, uh, list that um, we can share tips and uh, ask questions. And so, um, so if you come up with a better workflow, please share it with the class. But my workflow is this. I am going to control click on this so that I can always go back to this list if I want to. So I'm going to control click and that's going to open a new screen for me which I'm going to jump over to now. So I'm going to give this a minute. Um, but what you should be seeing on the new screen is a, a screen that says you have your political ad sleuth logo in your search box at the top, but it says political buy. And it's telling us that we're getting this from the FCC site. And it's giving you the data we've got, what station it's at, and we don't know how many spots there are and we don't know how much has been spent. So what I am going to do is once again, I'm going to go to the original document and once again, I'm going to control click so it opens in a new screen or right click, whatever, whatever works on your computer, okay? And now I'm going to look at what I've got. And, <clears throat> okay, this is interesting. This is not a contract, but this document is one of the chief reasons that we started this project. This document is a piece of paper that has to be filed by an advertiser. It's sometimes called the NAB form. NAB stands for National Association of Broadcasters, which has in fact uh, created a form for its members to use for this purpose. And under federal law, anyone who buys a political ad must identify their, uh, who is buying the ad, not just the buyer. The buyer is Neil Williams of Strategic Media Services. Are you all seeing this document, Political yes. Avail Request? Yes. 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 Neil Williams, Strategic Media Services, is the broker. He is what is known in, in the business as the buyer. There are all these companies that make a lot of money mm -hmm. because they are the folks that if I'm, you know, Tom Corbett's campaign committee, um, I'm going to go to them and say, I need to make a buy or help me make a buy. And these people have expertise and contacts at the TV station. But this form under federal law has to say who is the, the buyer, the advertiser. And in this case, they have filled this out correctly. It is the American Petroleum Institute. Jack Gerard is the chairman of the API, and it gives us some contact information. So yay, American Petroleum Institute. They did the right thing. I will tell you that the Sunlight Foundation, together with the Campaign Legal Center and Georgetown University's Institute for Public Representation, 
complained against 11 stations to the FCC earlier because these forms weren't being filled out correctly. Why is this important? It's important because in many campaigns, particularly as we get closer to Election Day, you are going to see a lot of what I call mystery meet committees. You know, Pennsylvanians for a better Keystone State, Philadelphians for better cheesesteak, right? Who are they? Is it your local PTA telling you to vote for or against Tom Corbett, or is it your local toxic waste dump? And having a name and a phone number and an address helps us to track that down. You know, if you're really energetic citizens or you run a blog, you can do it yourself. But if you don't have time to do it yourself, entering this data is going to help newspaper reporters, journalists, activist groups to do their jobs. And so that is why this is very, very important. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go back I'm going to toggle back and forth. Wait, if I'm at my big desk, I have two screens, so it makes it even easier because I put the original file. But I'm going to go back to my page, and I'm going to click this button, Enter Add Data. And now it gives me a form that we created that helps to enter this add data. And it may take a minute, but what you'll be seeing is a page that says, Add by a WPVI TV. And it says, this document isn't available on Document Cloud. Um, sometimes we have people who upload ads for us. Uh, this goes back to pre-July uh, 1st, uh, when some stations didn't have to put their uh, files online. And in that case, the uh, document went right to this uh, online server, and you would see it right on your page, which, which makes it a little easier. But we don't have it, so we're going to toggle back and forth between screens. And the first thing I'm going to check is this isn't an ad buy. So what that means is um, it's not a contract. It doesn't have, and we're going to look at a contract, so don't worry, you'll be able to tell the difference, but it doesn't have numbers of spots, amounts of, of money spent. Um, but I am going to fill in the advertising. <clears throat> and what you'll find is... A lot of these advertisers will pre-fill for you. So I usually pick the keyword petroleum. And as you can see or start to see, I started to type in PET, and I see, oh, this, um, this has already been entered. And so this just prevents you from double entering. If you do, don't worry about it. But um, I'm not going to enter American Petroleum Institute as a new entry. If it were a new entry, there would be a little box that would pop up and say, enter new advertiser, and you just type in the, the words American Petroleum Institute and hit enter advertiser, and that means it's in our system. So um, it'll just preload for you. So the advertiser is American Petroleum Institute. We're not going to fill in contract number or flight start date or grand total because that's not what this is. It's not a contract. But we have the broadcaster, and now in this field, additional data, I'm going to enter the media buyer, which is strategic media services, because I know that. And you'll see strategic media services. Strategic media placement may be the same company. Don't worry about it. Just hit the closest number or the closest name or fill in whatever. If it's, if it's not in the system, just fill it in. And now I'm going to scroll down to the bottom field, which is data entry notes. And so I am going to say this is an ad by request that identifies mm -hmm. um, American Petroleum Institute's principal. CEO, we'll say, and, and gives address. And what that does, and now I'm going to submit it. And now it may not show up right away. It sometimes takes a few minutes. But now if somebody goes back, they're going to see summarized, that mm -hmm. I have, in fact, uh, worked on that ad and I have entered it. And the reason I enter that little um, uh, sentence in the data field is that um, once you've entered the data, 
um, it becomes part of a data spreadsheet that you can download and work with. If any of you have worked with spreadsheets, a lot of reporters do, scholars do. So it's just useful information for them. If they're trying to say, I want to know more about these American Petroleum Institute buys, and they see that, they'll say, oh, there's contact information on this form. I can go to this form and find out. And it'll be especially helpful when people are trying to track down those mystery meat committees like Philadelphians for Better Cheesecake or whatever. Um, and they're trying to figure out who's behind this group. They'll know, oh, that's the document I need to go to. And I'll show you a little bit more about the spreadsheet in a minute. But okay, so we're done. So I'm going to go back to my original list. And uh, now I can see I'm going to do a refresh and see if it'll tell me that I have, in fact. And now you can see that second entry is summarized. So um, it tells us somebody's looked at this, OK? So now what I'm going to do, the easiest way for you to do your work is to not go by names of um, committees. We want to just go jump into the Philadelphia market, because that's what we care about. So when you start working, I just wanted to show you some of the functionality of AdSleuth so you'll understand um, why it's useful. Or if you, in fact, are interested in looking at a certain committee or a group, you can do that. You can search by the committee name. But what we're going to do is we're going to go to the top of Political Ad Sleuth. And at the top of the page, you'll see a series of tabs. And the first one says Market Report. And I'm going to click there. Appreciate that. And here uh, you're going to see a page that says TV markets by total ad documents filed, 714 to 720. So this is looking at the week that we're in. And it's showing you where there's the most activity. Uh, so Phoenix, there's a lot of activity in Phoenix. Um, as you probably know, there's a big contretemps in Arizona over children coming across the border. I bet that there's a lot of ads involving that or different politicians. There are a lot of hot races this year in Arizona. That may be one reason. Um, I don't know why Wichita is active. There could be all kinds of reasons. You'd have to look into it. But what we're going to do, we're not interested in just the active markets. We want to look at a particular TV market. So I'm going to click this little black lozenge that says TV Markets. And that will take me to a page that lists all of the TV markets. And so what I'm going to do is rather than use this Search Ad Buys box, which just gives us a search of uh, files in this system, I want to look for Philadelphia. And so instead of um, you know, uh, scrolling down this long list, I'm going to hit Control F. I don't know how you do this on your computer, but I'm just going to type in Philadelphia. And you see uh, it'll jump right to the Philadelphia market. So we can see that we've got a lot of ads in Philadelphia. And the most ads are in this first column, which is the non-candidate ads. So it's outside groups. Uh, so I'm going to click on the word Philadelphia. If you click below to all stations, it's going to take you to a page that lists all stations in the Philadelphia market. So just know that that's there if you're interested. But we're going to click on Philadelphia. And um, that's going to now take me to a page that says Ad Filings in Philadelphia, PA. So I hope you're all seeing that. Yes. Okay. Yep. So now we see at the top a lot of Tom Corbett ads. So as we can see, the first two are a WPSG. And then we have um, KYW. I am going to um, advise you to avoid KYW. And you're going to wonder why, because it's the biggest station in Philly. But the reason is, one of my colleagues, who is really a tech wizard, uh, who actually helped build this tool, has figured out a way that he can mechanically do the data entry from KYW. Um, one of the vexing things about um, this work that we're doing is it requires so much human intervention, because 
uh, the FCC really allows these stations very wide latitude in how they file. Um, and so um, you're going to see that there are different form every station has a different form, and you've kind of got to look around to find the information that you need. Um, and so, um, uh, but w at least one of them in Philadelphia, we have figured out a way to do all this laborious work that you're going to do uh, by computer. So yay, we don't have to do KYW, few big relief. Um, we are going to load that data um, mechanically. So scratch KYW off your list. So let's go first to uh, the first Corbett ad. <clears throat> and I'm going to click on it. And again, I'm going to control click to get this on a new page. And uh, what you're seeing is going to look familiar. Uh, it's our initial page. Um, I will say that when you go to enter ad data for the first time, it will ask you to log in. Uh, please do not worry. Sunlight Foundation is a nonprofit. We do not sell people's emails or contact information. The reason we ask you to sign in is that, as you know, uh, politics can attract some, uh, can generate some pretty virulent passions and attract some pretty strange people. So uh, I know none of you fit in that category. But if somebody tries to game our system, we need to know who they are so that we can track back and keep them from doing that. We would just merely disinvite them, from, uh, block them from entering uh, data here. So that's the only reason we ask for it. Um, what I usually do, because I can never remember my password, is that I sign in with Facebook or Twitter, which um, is an option here. Uh, so the first time you hit this little lozenge that says enter ad data, just know you're going to get a request for a sign-in. You do it whatever way you want. If you want to sign in with Facebook or Twitter, go for it. That's what I do. If you want to create your own uh, login and password, you can do that too. So first I'm going to click on the original document. Again, control clicking so that I get that up on a separate page and can toggle back and forth. And now I'm going to hit my enter ad data button that will take me to our uh, form. And I'm going to go see what I got here. And here indeed is an order summary. Now, this may um, be a dupe. Uh, we don't know. There are order forms. There are contracts. It's very, very hard to tell um, because stations have such different uh, formats. But what you can see here is here is an order number, which I'm going to enter in the contract number. And the reason I do that is because it's, the forms are so confusing, um, I want to be able to flag if there is a dupe here, if this is a duplicate. So having some sort of contract number or ID f uh, number is helpful. So, and that looks like uh, the order number here. The start end date. This is going to tell you, this is the flight date, <clears throat> and it's telling you uh, how you, what day we're starting and what day we're ending. Um, this is a very interesting form. Not every uh, form includes this, but this tells you here um, what other stations the, uh, the buyer has purchased on for these, this same ad buy. So they're telling you that the share at this station is 2%, but 32% of the buy is at WPVI, 25% at WCAU, 22% at KYW, 16% at WTXF, and 3% at WPHIL. So um, that's interesting information. You might want to make a note of it uh, in the bottom field. There's the agency is our buyer, Brabender Cox. And, um, and then, if you're interested and really want to geek out here, um, below this is going to tell you some information about uh, where the buys are happening. And this is a little bit uh, less informative than some forms. Some forms actually will have the names of the, um, the shows on them, but it tells you how much they've purchased for each spot. So um, now I'm going to start to enter this. So I'm going to toggle back to my other screen. And sometimes you can copy this. In this case, you can. Um, and I'm just going to copy that number uh, right into my uh, form. 
Our advertiser is Corbett, so I'm going to just enter his name and see if he's in there yet. And there's Tom Corbett for governor, and I'm going to enter that. That looks like the best entry here. I've entered the contract number. I'm now going to enter the ad flight date, which are 721, 725. Somebody has a nice dog there. Um, oh, great. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. And now I want to go back and find the grand total here. Sometimes you're going to find that up at the top. <coughs> like here, we're going to have to scroll down to the bottom of this contract. And again, um, you know, it varies contract to contract. So here we have at the very bottom page, which I hope you're seeing now, the more numbers that we want. You'll see the gross, the net, and the total, which is the number of ads, the spots. The difference, just for your information, between the gross and the net is what the um, agent got. So Braybender Cox got the difference between the 5000 and the 4200 So nice little payday, 800 bucks or so. Um, so me, what we're interested in is further? Yeah, so 5020 is what we're going to enter here. No dollar signs and no commas. This will... Um, um, we can't see what you're doing. Okay. There's a ribbon across the bottom, a menu ribbon or something. It's a doc. It's a, it's a Mac doc. Oh, okay. Let me scroll it up higher. Oh, that was too high. Okay. Let me scroll it back down. Let's find the just right. Still too high. Okay. You're, you're on the data entry page. You're not the, the contract anymore. You have to go up a little more. Okay, go up. A little more. No, no, the other way. I guess okay. it's down, I'm sorry. More. More, more. Let me see if I can hide this. Okay, sorry. I was trying to hide my doc. Um, I think if you go to the top bar, there's um, in file or the Apple button, there's a hide doc. Uh, okay. Doc, just go You're to on the wrong screen. You need to be on the screen with the contract. That's what we were looking for, the information. Where you see the information on the, on the contract? You're on the data entry okay, screen. Okay, I'll go back to the contract then. Right, that's better. That's perfect. Okay, there we go. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right, great. So there's where you see. Um, you're seeing here total spots is 13, and the total, the gross amount, which we can see here, is five thousand twenty dollars. Okay. Yeah. Incidentally, <clears throat> what you'll notice as you enter this data is candidates, in this case Corbett, is getting a much lower rate. When you enter, if this were Pennsylvanians for a better Pennsylvania or some outside group, they'd be paying a higher rate. Uh, candidates get the uh, lowest unit rate, as it's called, at TV stations. So, um, so now I'm going to go back to my data entry page, and I'm going to enter that data. I've entered my flight date. I've entered the grand total. I'm not using uh, commas. Um, and then I'm going to enter the ad spots, which is 13. Where did and you get that from? Can you go back again? I'm going to go back. And it's going to vary, but here you see spots. Oh, okay. And then where it will say quantity. And it's usually going to be a number. It might be as high as in the hundreds, but it's not going to be more than that. You know, I've seen them as high as like 113 or 120 spots but seldom are you going to see it higher than that. So now I'm going to go back to my data entry, and I'm going to scroll down and enter media buyer. Mm -hmm. And so in this case, it's Braybender Cox, and you can see we have them in there. Mm -hmm. uh, we have them listed in different ways. Uh, I'm going to enter Braybender Cox. And if you wanted to enter anything about the data, you could. You might say here, um, this form includes um, information 
on other stations. That's what I showed you at the top, and I'll go back and show you that. Not all of them do, um, but I'm going to submit that now. And I'm just going to go back and show you on this form. Uh, and this sometimes is interesting because it helps you calculate, okay, we know that this buy, are you all seeing this at the top of the form? Yes. Um, this buy at this station was 2% of the total buy for this particular ad. Okay, and then it's giving you the other stations in the market, where they bought, and how much. So that's interesting. And up here, by the way, you can see the actual percentage for the agency commission. So uh, Braybender Cox got 15% of the $5,020 for making this buy. So you can see um, if that is of interest to you. So, and it is for some people. How much are the media buyers getting uh, for, for what they're doing? So now we're out of that. Um, I'm going to go to another station so we can see the difference. Uh, so I'm back on my original page, my, uh, my Philadelphia list, and I'm going to ignore uh, KYW because I know we don't need to enter that. But here is, uh, I'm going to scroll down to WPHL, and um, I've got some buys by the National Republican Congressional Committee which is a well-known outfit here. It's an arm of the Republican Party, um, and they are probably buying in one of the competitive races in your area. It could be the race, um, I can't remember, it's, it could be one of the Pennsylvania districts, or it could be there's a district in South Jersey um, that is very competitive, currently represented by uh, Representative Runyon, I think. He used to be a Philadelphia Eagle. Yes. And uh, yeah. he has decided to leave Congress, and so there's a competitive race for his seat. So it could be in his district. We don't know. But we're going to, um, again, control-click and see what this is. And um, I'm going to open the page. And again, I'm going to open, control click on my original document. And I'm going to see what I've got. And here we are. We have another contract. Okay. So now you're going to see uh, that this is a slightly different format because it's a different TV station. Um, and so here's our contract number. Um, here is our uh, buyer, National Media Research. Uh, here are our flight dates. Um, and uh, below uh, you are seeing, and here's one of the more fun ones where you see they're buying against weekday late news. Uh, sometimes you see it's uh, Monday Prime A, oh, boring, we don't know what that means. But sometimes you'll see Jeopardy, NASCAR, and then it gives you kind of a fun way to uh, determine uh, what the demographic is that this particular candidate is going after. Um, I will say <clears throat> the one piece of information that you don't get from this is what the ad is. And that's why this project is so exciting because the Internet Archive, our partners in this project, have installed some uh, equipment at the University of Pennsylvania that is recording all of the TV in your market. And through their technical magic, they are going to make this searchable so that we can then, because you're going to be entering information about the ad buys and we have the information on when it aired, we can say, aha, the NRCC bought an ad uh, that was supposed to run between 10 and 10.30 on 10.24. As you can see, this is an ad by bought for the end of the campaign. Uh, and what was the ad? And we're going to be able to go and see exactly what that ad was. So I'm going to show you, um, again, I'm going to enter this data because I have it opened and why not. Uh, let's see if we can copy this number. No, this is one of those uh, PDFs that I can't, so I'm just going to have to remember. 599-352, and I'm going to go back and enter this data. So this is, in fact, an ad buy. The advertiser is um, National Republican Congressional Committee. Our contract number is 599. Does anybody remember the last 352. 352, thank you. You're welcome. 
Um, and our flight dates are 1021 to 1027. So this is the interesting thing. I mean, you can see that um, groups are, have already reserved time, so you know when not to watch TV <laughs> because you're going to be slammed Philadelphia. Um, and now we're going to go back and look for our total, which, again, I think will be sometimes some forms have them up here at the top, but we're going to scroll down. Um, trust me, once you get the workflow down, it goes really fast. Um, so this is a big buy, and I told you the outside groups pay a lot more. So for 24 spots, uh, the NRCC is paying $29,700. So we're going to enter 29700 or 24, right? 700? No, 29700, right? Yep. And it was 24 spots. And uh, I'm going to enter the buyer here which I think was National Media Research. One reason I'm interested, um, I think this is an interesting thing to enter. As you may know, outside committees are not supposed to coordinate with the candidates they are trying to help. Um, so I think it's interesting to enter the media buyer because uh, we could um, potentially see are they using the same media buyer as the candidate? If so, uh, how can they claim they are not coordinating? Now, I'm going to go back to this file. Uh, you can always go back and edit the same file. And so if you make a mistake, and as you can see here, it's entered our dollar sign and our comma for us. And we've got the data entered. But say I made a mistake or I want to go back and add something else. I can just hit this Enter Add Data button again, and it will take me back. Uh, to the page where I can edit. And the reason I did this is not because we made a mistake, but I want to show you another feature that we have here. And this says add a political spot at the very bottom of the page. I do not recommend that you do this. Uh, it may be over and above the call, but if you get really interested and you want to know um, more precise details, as you saw on the contract, it's telling us exactly when the spot is going to air, what day, what time slot. Sometimes it will be entered for Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. So if you wanted to actually go back and enter spot by spot, you could. Um, I, we're not requiring that because it's very, very time consuming. I know there are scholars who are very interested in this data, so I just want to point out that that capacity is there. If we want to really drill down and say, um, I want to know exactly 1024 to 1024, this is entering on the first weekday, which uh, probably means Sunday, late news, um, that's when I can tell, uh, I think that's what that means. No, I think this means Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, so as you can see, it's very hard. Here's two Sundays um, or Mondays. It's very, it's very hard to determine this. So we'd have to go and talk to the stations and get a better feel for how they're entering this. But I just want you to know that that's available. Um, some of these will tell you exactly what day. Well, it does. Um, yeah, it does in a, you know, I don't know. Are they starting the week? Here it says Monday through Friday, so am I supposed to assume Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, fr you know? Yeah, absolutely. If you look okay. at the one that says Saturday, it's on the Sunday, Monday, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you could enter that data if you really wanted to get ambitious. <laughs> what I would recommend, uh, this is a suggestion from Jacob, our developer, is that especially as you're starting out, Focus on one station because every station has a different form, but as you become accustomed to a specific station, you're going to be able to go faster. You'll know exactly where the information is. As you saw, when we moved from one station to another, we had to look in different places for the information we wanted to enter. 
So I think if you get accustomed to a particular station's form, um, you will, uh, you know, you'll be able to zip right along here in entering data. And then if you get ambitious and want to do another station, go for it. But just realize that um, uh, as you, what I would recommend, as you can see, uh, when we go back to our uh, Philadelphia page, um, there are um, ad filings coming in all the time. So I would start with uh, what's coming in most recently and go for the not loaded. Um, but you can always go back. And um, there have been – one of the things that um, this tool has taught us is that the advertising season never ends. Um, most people have followed political advertising by looking at what people file at the Federal Election Commission. And that is not catching nearly all the data because the, um, the regulations for when you need to declare a political ad are quite limited. I can walk you through that if you want to know. Um, and so we're seeing very early ad – we were seeing advertising for the 2014 campaign beginning to be purchased before the 2012 election was over. Wow. And we saw advertising in some of the swing states all through 2013. So it's really like the air war that prepares the field for the ground troops. And, um, and so going back and seeing who was advertising in your state um, early on could be very, very interesting. The other thing that you're going to see, especially in Pennsylvania, are ads that aren't necessarily aimed at candidates but are very political in the sense that they're looking to influence issues. And the big one that I've seen a lot of in Pennsylvania is on fracking. Mm -hmm. So you're going to see environmental groups coming in. You're going to see uh, groups like the reason I searched for the American P Petroleum Institute. They advertise heavily on uh, fracking and on the Keystone Pipeline, uh, which is another issue that's very big. And they're trying to what they're trying to do is influence public opinion to influence lawmakers. So you'll see a lot of that, which is also very interesting, um, even though it's not particular. It, it's not necessarily aimed at November 4th. It's aimed at influencing how the people who are elected on November 4th act afterwards. So. Um, so that is, you know, that's a very important thing, I think, to, to have logged. And you may see other things. You're going to see very local uh, advertisements that have to do with maybe local issues, uh, local campaigns. I think one of the things that will be useful for you in Philadelphia, you've got a big mayor's race and city council races coming up in 2015. This tool could be very useful for you um, uh, to sort of unmask who, uh, who's trying to influence the election in those races as well. So um, are there any questions or concerns? Um, I know I've gone through a lot of material, uh, but please feel free to ask. I have a question. Do issue-oriented ads that are not tied in any way to a candidate, are they also required to file um, a form? Yes, they are. Okay. And, um, and that's why um, these, these forms are very important uh, because <clears throat> a lot of the advertising um, by these outside groups, um, to you or I, it looks like a duck, it talks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, but it's not a political ad. Um, and <clears throat> that's because uh, under the – Federal Election Commission rules, um, a political ad does not have to be declared as such unless it expressly says vote for or vote against a candidate and or, or rather, it airs within 30 days of a primary election or 60 days of a non-primary election, or of a general election. Mm -hmm. So. A lot of groups will go on with ads that will say things like, um, uh, do you hate fracking? Do you think uh, Tom Corbett has been soft on fracking because he doesn't want to tax the fracking industry? Call Tom Corbett and tell him that. And it will probably put a picture of Tom Corbett in an unflattering light. Or, you know, it could do the same thing with – uh, Bob Casey or somebody who's running and, you know, on the other ideal side of the ideological spectrum, believe me, both, both sides do it. Mm -hmm. And um, 
and it will um, it will tell you. Uh, in, in other words, it gives it leaves a very distinct impression in voters' minds about that particular candidate, and uh, and yet it never has to show up at the FEC, and. Um, because many of these groups are nonprofits who never have to declare their donors, it's very, very hard to figure out who they are. And I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to show you an example of one of these ads so you see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to open up one of our other tools, which might be fun for you to play with if you get interested in any of this. And it's called Ad Hoc, H-A-W-K. We love puns here at the Sunlight Foundation. And this was uh, built by Bob Lannon, who is a Philadelphian, uh, who we brought, we stole from Philadelphia, and we brought him here. Um, and Ad Hoc is this fun um, tool that was built really as a mobile app. You can download this on your smartphone; it's free. And um, if you're sitting watching TV, you know your favorite show or the baseball game or something, um, and you hold up and you see the the ad for the umpteenth time, and you're thinking. Who the heck is this? You know, who is this home invader? Who's bothering me? You activate your ad hoc app on your phone and you hold it up, and it uses voice print technology. And if we have this ad in our database, it will tell you, oh, that's Pennsylvanians for a better Pennsylvania. Uh, they're a super PAC, and here's their five biggest donors because we uh, hook it up with one of our campaign contribution databases. So we try to do what Congress so far hasn't, which is give you some information on the money behind these ads. Um, but as a result of having built this tool, we have a very big database of political ads. And I'm going to look for uh, one. Uh, this is just a, an example. Um, the American Chemistry Council, which is another uh, trade group, also does a lot of political ad, uh, it's, you know, issue advertising is what it's called. And you can see uh, that they are doing a lot of ads um, for incumbent members of Congress. So what you should be seeing, uh, if ReadyTalk catches up with me, is a page um, with a lot of advertising. So let's pick a Pennsylvania guy, okay, Bill Schuster, who um, is head of the, he's from the other end of the state, but uh, he is running for Congress, uh, had a little bit of a primary challenge from the Tea Party because uh, Schuster, like his daddy, Bud Schuster, uh, heads the Transportation Committee. And um, so let's just look at the ad. And uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear it, but I'll try to turn up the volume. Um, In southwestern Pennsylvania, hard work is a way of life, and Bill Schuster works hard for us. Born and raised here, Bill Schuster understands our local economy. And as a conservative leader, he's fighting in Congress to cut spending and government regulation so we can expand manufacturing and domestic energy, creating good jobs here at home. Call and tell Bill Schuster, keep fighting for conservative values and Pennsylvania families. Okay. So I don't know if you heard that, but the word chemistry was never mentioned in that ad. Um, and um, <clears throat> it just says Bill's a great guy. And if you were out of the room getting a beer or you didn't have a Hubble telescope to see the screenshot here where it's, it, you can see it's very light, paid for by the American Chemistry Council, you wouldn't necessarily know who this group is. And, um, in fact, um, that is not a political ad as the FCC defines it. I mean, this is about a candidate who's up for re-election, um, but it is not airing within 30 days of the uh, primary. We could look it up on Ad Sleuth. It probably ran last summer. I was just saying, what a great guy. And, um, and you know, he likes dogs and puppy cats, and he's for jobs and family farms and yada, da 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 And um, why is that important? Well, you know, one of the – uh, people who also benefited from an ad uh, like this is, is named Fred Upton. He's a uh, congressman from Michigan. He chairs the House Energy and Commerce Committee, which is currently considering a rewrite of the Toxic Materials Act. In other words, how we handle toxic materials. The American Chemistry Council has been lobbying heavily on that bill. You can imagine what they're lobbying for. And they spent a quarter of a million dollars last summer 
uh, putting on big wet kiss ads like this in Fred Upton's district. So I think voters need to understand who's sending these messages if, so they have a prism through which to evaluate the message they're getting. Should I like Bill or shouldn't I? I mean, it's important to understand who, you know, this is kind of journalism 101. And since, you know, it's like, who's giving me? What's my source? Consider my source. Who is giving me this information and why? And that's a question that journalists have to ask themselves every day. Now we are citizens in an information society, so we have to do that too. We swim in a world of information, and we have to consider the source. And so that's why this work, I think, is very, very important, because it helps people to understand that. You may not connect all of the dots, but you are putting some information out there so activist groups, journalists, other people can do that work. So um, this work is extremely important, and that's why, because groups like this can put these ads on. And, you know, they're, it's, it's a free country. That's great. But let's understand who they are. And at least, at least the American Chemistry Council, we have some sense of who these people are, right? But this could, underneath it could say, paid for by Pennsylvanians for a better Pennsylvania which could, in fact, be a front for the American Chemistry Council or an organization, you know, for toxic waste dumps, Inc., you know. That's why entering those forms that say, who's the chairman, what's the phone number, and if it's not properly entered, you should say that because that's what we filed our complaint with with the FCC. You should say in your data notes, this is an NAB form that does not identify the principle of the organization, because we've seen a lot of that. And we we've, we've take that information and we go to the Federal Communications Commission and we filed a complaint and the 11 stations are, um, have apologized and we are starting to see improvements in the filings. Any other questions? I, I have a question. Earlier you mentioned that a colleague was able to um, data enter, you know, mechanically um, with KYW, and I was wondering why they can't do that with the other stations if, if they've implemented. Yeah, it's a good, it's a really good question. It has to do with how the stations upload um, their uh, their data to the FCC, and some of them um, upload it in a way that makes it easy for a computer to read the forms. Um, not all of them do. And so uh, we just know that so far in Philadelphia, we've only found one that we can uh, grab the files mechanically. The problem is that um, I don't know how familiar all of you are with this, but when we open the contracts and look at the original documents, we're looking at a PDF, which is I think stands for Portable Document Format. And it was invented basically, you know, back in the dawn of computers when some people had Word and some people had Word MS and, you know, different formats. So this was a format that made it possible for people to share documents, no matter whether you had a Windows or a Mac or, you know, whatever your Word, your uh, editing program was. Um, it's become a little bit obsolete, but people still use it because uh, it's handy and it also guarantees that your document is going to be presented the way you want it to look on the screen, okay, which is important for some people. The problem is that it's basically like a picture of a piece of paper, and that makes it very difficult for computers to grab the numbers and pull them in in an accurate way. So that's why this hand entry is required. Um, we wish that were not the case. Uh, our policy arm of the Sunlight Foundation is uh, talking to the Federal Communications Commission and urging them to uh, ask the TV stations. You know, look, uh, these are TV stations. They make money, and it's hard to believe that they don't have all of this information in a spreadsheet, which they could simply share with the FCC and then, you know, 
all of your manual labor would be obviated because we'd be able to pull this in uh, with a computer. But right now we don't. And uh, to quote a famous American, we have to fight with the Army we have. And so that's why we need you, um, because uh, we, we want this to get better, but we're, it's a step-by-step -step process. Uh, I think the more we use these files and prove the public utility of having this information online and readily available to voters, uh, the more we're going to help um, make the case to the FCC that, um, that they should uh, require electronic data to be uploaded rather than, you know, a picture of a piece of paper. Um, I, I believe, this is just my humble opinion, but uh, when the FCC originally uh, asked for uh, the online uploads in 2010, uh, it was essentially a pilot project. You know, only about 230 stations across the country uh, fell under that order, you know, being in the, the top 50 markets and being affiliated with one of the top four broadcast networks. Uh, now we have two, more than 2,000 stations uploading documents. And the reason, I think, is that uh, the Sunlight Foundation and others uh, very aggressively used the information that we had available to do reporting, to do analysis, and I think that helped persuade the Federal Communications Commission that, hey, uh, people are making use of this data and it's really helping voters in making informed decisions when they go to the polls. So I think the more we do, uh, the easier it's going to get. Question? Yes. Uh, you've spent an hour giving us very detailed instructions on how to go about this process, uh, and quite honestly, I perhaps remember 10% of it. <laughs> well, will there be written instructions? Is there an online location we can go yes. to? Yes, um, there oh. are a couple places you can go. First of all, um, I hope that I've been recording this um, this information, uh, and when and if I have been successful. Uh, I will upload that to the web, and if you do send me your email addresses, and again, my email address uh, is kk, two k's, i-e-l-y, at sunlightfoundation.com, and I will try to uh, put that up for you. I think I have a slide, if I can show it. And then the other way that you can um, uh, do this is on our political ad sleuth page, um, which I'll go back to uh, political ad sleuth here, uh, the main page. Uh, uh, there are two tabs at the top of political ad sleuth on the far right hand side. One says about, and one says FAQ. And uh, for some reason, my internet connection is down. That's weird. Um, all right. Stand by, folks. And I'm going to try to hook up manually. I've had a nice uh, Wi-Fi connection here. But anyway, on that page, uh, we have some information which may be helpful. And, um, and that, I, that, I think, uh, will help solve your problem. The other way is when you send the email address to me, um, I will also um, be available. I have this uh, listserv called Philly Ad Sleuths. I'll add you to it. And um, the idea of that is that we can uh, email and it'll go to the whole group. And your question may be one that other people have figured out the answer to. Um, bear with me while I grab a hard line here for my computer and see if I can get back on the Internet. Yeah, uh, hi, Kathy. This is uh, Pat Christmas over at uh, Committee of 70. Hi, Pat. Uh, how's everyone doing? Uh, I just wanted to add that we uh, we may also uh, uh, draft um, some kind of brief uh, instruction manual with the stuff we've gone over today. And of course, Kathy, we we would run this by you to make sure everything makes sense. And if 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 that would help as well to have like a, a you know an A B C one two three straightforward of, you know what do you do here, um, we'll uh, we'll put that together as well. well if, that, if that makes sense to you, Kathy. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. That's good. That sounds great. I have a question. Are, oh. Is it written so down ahead. anywhere which um, ads are considered political ads and which ones are considered not, like just defined, so we can make sure that we're not um, documenting you, things that you don't want to count? Anything you see here is going to be a, um, a political ad. Um, 
because um, you are. Are you all seeing um, a screen? Yep. Okay, good. It says unable to connect to the internet. Okay, now, all right, now, it, now we should be back. So um, I hope that eventually you're going to see Political Ad Sleuth FAQ. It's on there. Okay. There. Yeah. And um, so the first part you're going to see um, collecting the files. Do not worry about that. Um, when this tool was first built, uh, there were no online filings, and we had to rely on volunteers to actually go to the stations to get them. And then from 2010 until just earlier this month, uh, we just had the 230 stations I described to you. And so there were a lot of missing markets, and um, also we, even within major markets like Philadelphia, some stations that uh, were of interest um, and so we would ask volunteers to go, say, for example, and get uh, the files from a Spanish language station and upload them or uh, go to a market where maybe there was some interesting uh, political activity going on, but it wasn't a top 50 market. So that's what that going to the TV stations is all about. Happily, we do not have to do that anymore because um, the uh, FCC has ordered all stations to upload their political files. Um, and that means political files. On this, on political ad sleuth, all you're going to see are political files. Some of them may be related to a, an, a candidate, and some of them may be related to a, uh, an issue, like I described, like fracking. Uh, but they're all going to be political. So uh, just enter, you can enter what you see here. So on this um, FAQ, there are some uh, question answers uh, here, and this is the section entering data from uploaded documents that you want to look at. It's this collecting files you don't need to worry about. Um, the only way I would say that's important is if we decide this is a smash success and we want to expand for future elections, we might want to consider getting cable TV buys or uh, radio station buys, and then we would have to go the old-fashioned way and um, physically pick up the files. But for now, let's worry about um, the data entry. And so that gives you some information. Um, and then also uh, our About page uh, tells you we have kind of a fun uh, video here uh, with one of our former uh, fellows uh, that also gives you a little more information about political ad sleuth and the problem uh, that we're trying to solve. So. Um, some of this is a little outdated uh, because, again, it's talking about the top 50 markets, but, um, but the basic information on what this project is about is under about. Um, methodology is here. Um, and then you can also see our um, FAQ, which may be helpful. Um, but we, yeah, absolutely um, sign up. Send me your email. I will get you on the listserv. Um, feel free to ask questions. Uh, you can also call me. Uh, let me see if I can find the slide that will tell you. Here is my contact info, and Pat, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> of course. That's, I put your great. contact info on there, too. Um, so um, can you all see that? Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, a question about, um, I think the technique of using control click so that we can have multiple screens is uh, great. Uh, what about when you're finished with that particular contract and you want to go to something else? How do you close all those screens? How do you know what's open and what's closed? Uh, I just click off the screen. And um, what I do, that's why I control click. When I get my original list, you know, so I go to the Philadelphia market. And uh, then I, let's just do it again uh, so we can walk through it. So I'm going to go to Market Report. Uh, and now remember, I'm going to do my Control Find and do Philadelphia. And then I'm going to click on Philadelphia. Oh, I understand that, but when you pick out a particular contract and you have the contract and you have the data entry form open and you're going between the two of them, then you, when you're finished with those, how do you close them? You just close the tab. You just close the tab. 
So let's walk through one. I'm going to sh let's do another one uh, just so we can and see here. This says I E N A B. That's the N A B form that um, which I'll show you. Um, so very quickly, uh, let's go through this one, which is not a contract. I'm pretty sure. Uh, because again, some stations identify their NAB forms. Um, so I've control clicked, I've got my uh, data entry uh, page open. I'm going to control click on the original document. Control click. Yeah, because it's opening it in a new tab. It, you may have a different way. It might be right click for you on your computer, uh, or you may have multiple ways to do it. But essentially, what I'm trying to do is open that original document in a new tab so that here on this page, I'm going to hit Enter Add Data. And now I've got my form. As you can see, all my, my blank form is here. And on the next screen, I'm just tabbing over. And this is our agreement. And let's see how good a job they did. This is the actual NAB form. Um, and so John Farrell, who is probably a media buyer, this is telling us, I'm not putting this in here because I've already handed in a schedule, okay. Does this relate to a message, does this give a message relating to a political matter of national importance? Yes. Now, state issue, so theoretically, Tom Corbett, doesn't have to file this form. This is just only for people who are in a federal race. It's telling me yes. It's now this. I think they should have filled out this form. Um, list the name of the legally qualified candidates the programming refers to. It's possible the National Republican Congressional Committee has an ad that just says Republicans are great, but I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it. I bet they mention a candidate here. They either mention a Republican they want in the in the Congress, or they are mentioning a Democrat they want to defeat. So <clears throat> I think that's probably a violation. Um, but this, at least, they're giving us the name of the committee and the treasurer. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to go back to my edit a political buy, and I'm going to enter the advertiser which is National Republican, and there they are, National Republican Congressional Committee, not the Senatorial Committee. No contract number. I'm not going to bother with the flight dates because this is not relevant. The media buyer is, we don't know, actually. We could put John Farrell. He's not in there, so I'm going to add him, okay? And I'm going to submit. So that at least gives you an idea of when you have a newbie, that's how you do it. And for my data entry notes, I'm going to say this is an NAB form that does not identify a candidate who is mentioned. Or you could just say does not identify a candidate. I think that's interesting. Why do I think it's interesting? Because if we go back and we see a pattern that the NRCC is never identifying candidates, we're going to file a complaint because that's against the law. So, and, and, you know, maybe it's just somebody being lazy, but they shouldn't be able to get away with it. So submit. So now I see my form's done. Uh, I'm going to move this so you can see what I'm doing. Oops not going to let me move. Sorry about that. My little control bar is up there. But I'm just going to click off this site, click off this page, click off that page because I'm done, right? And now I'm just going to go back and uh, go back to my filings. Does that help? Yes, thank you. Just click it off. Yeah. Once you see that you've submitted and you see it's gone through, you can just, just move on to the next thing. That's what I would recommend. Um, so that's how we do that. Um, and if I do a refresh on this page, it might not show up right away, but pretty soon instead of not loaded next to that, um, next time you go onto this page, this will probably say summarized. Um, so 
that's how we that's how we operate. Um, and Jacob Fenton, who is actually the developer of this site, one of them uh, is in the room. So if anybody has any tech questions, uh, there's one other thing I wanted to show you. And while Jacob's here, um, is a good time to do it. Um, this. A button here. I know there's a little bit of a delay, but I'm circling at the top of the page. Download CSV of all files. The reason that entering this data is important is that you can press this button, and I'm not going to do it because it's going to take a while. It's, there's an awful lot of files in a Political Ad Sleuth, but it will download an Excel spreadsheet, Excel type, a, a comma separated value spreadsheet that you can import into Excel or your uh, database uh, user of uh, program of choice, and um, you can start to analyze these ads. Uh, you can filter them for Philadelphia or for Pennsylvania. You can filter by committee. Um, you can filter by date. Um, and then all the data that you've entered will be listed there. Um, and so you can start to see, oh, it looks like there's two contracts with the same number. One of them must be a duplicate. Let's see which is the most recent. Um, you can see, uh, you can start to add up how much a particular committee has uh, spent in a particular market. Um, so, and it usually takes, what, Jacob, uh, about a day for all of the data to show up in the CSV? Yeah, th that's correct. I mean, we're, we're looking into uh, increasing the number of files. So instead of having one file for everything, have one that's only 2014 specific and changing this a little bit. Uh, in general, this is an area that, that we think could be a little bit better um, without too much effort. So we're Yeah, so you don't have to download the entire political absolute database, maybe. That's, we're working on making yeah, yeah, that better. Yeah, uh, and the, the other thing I'd, I'd, I'd say, well, yeah. That's, I think that was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can I just clarify what you're saying? You're saying that if you click on that uh, download CSV of all files, that literally means all the files in the entire database, not just the ones that are related to filings in Philadelphia? That's correct, yeah. Well, wow. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I mean, it's not impossible. I'm working on a really tiny Mac Air with a, a, the least amount of memory possible, and um, and I've got a lot of crapola on my computer, and I'm still able to download that CSV and uh, work with it. I just wouldn't keep multiple copies on your computer, you know. Um, and this, as you can see up here, um, this database is updated very frequently. Um, and uh, so, uh, you know, if you're working with it one day, but then you come back in a week, uh, just download a new version, and you'll get more ads. And you'll see everything that's in the database, whether somebody has gone in and loaded the ad or not. It's just that when the ad's been summarized, as we say here, you'll get number of spots, amount of money spent, any data notes that have been, <coughs> excuse me, added to the file. That will all be there. So, um, so you know, it's it's very it's a very useful way to start to analyze the data uh, once it's been entered. Any other questions? Is there any thought of putting all that that data on a uh, cloud so it wouldn't have to be downloaded? Or um, well, <clears throat> uh, no, well, the download is actually <laughs> downloading. The data is kind of out there for anybody to use. Uh -huh. uh, the download is actually turning it into a spreadsheet. Okay. Um, so it's it's there, but um, but what this does is take the most current iteration of the database and put it into a spreadsheet so people can start doing you know computing with it. Okay. So what's the next step for me? The next step for you is to uh, jump into the ad filings in Philadelphia, PA, and um, start entering ads. Start going through what we just did. Um, click on an, an ad and start to enter it. As I said, um, avoid KYW because we are going to be able to do that uh, right. thanks to Jacob's magic um, mechanically. But any other station in Philadelphia, um, just start clicking on ads. Uh, I would avoid KYW. And 
uh, don't bother entering an ad that's summarized because if you click on an ad that's summarized, as I am doing right now with the Tom Corbett ad, uh, you will see uh, as you scroll down, oh, somebody's already entered this. We have a total spent, we have a contract number, a flight date, and a number of ad spots. So uh, you don't need to go back into that file. Um, so just go to the um, ads that are not KYW stations. Uh, any station but KYW and any ad that says not summarized. And, um, and uh, what I would do is um, I would think a lot of people are going to start from the top. So one way to do this to make sure that you're getting new stuff, uh, as you can see showing results 1 to 100 here at the top of the page. I'm going to wait for uh, ReadyTalk to catch up. But uh, when you're looking at your Philadelphia market page, uh, right before the list of TV stations, markets, there are buttons, and it can take me to the next page. So you can page through and find a page that uh, somebody hasn't worked on much yet and just go to town. And if, uh, I, again, as I say, I realize this is a lot of information, so feel free to contact me and, uh, or to, once you send me your email addresses, you'll be on the Philly Ad Sleuth listserv. Just send out questions, and uh, if I'm not around, uh, volunteers can help each other because there are people who have been working on this, and who knows, somebody may have uh, a better system than I've come up with. <laughs> I awesome. have a question I, for you. I have to go. Uh, thank you for your work. I appreciate it. I'll all right. Thank you, you for thank all of you for uh, taking the time. Is everybody uh, does everybody feel ready to rock and roll at least pro tem? I have a question. Yes. You, I, I came in just a little late, so you may have covered this, but if I'm working on this page and somebody else comes in, there's no way that we can cross over each other and mess things up, right? No. You know I mean? uh, if somebody is working on the exact same file that you were working on, um, I would say um, whoever enters hits the button last. That's the data that's going to be entered. Um, it's not going to mess anything up. But one way to avoid that is um, by using the listserv. Um, so you can basically send out an all call saying, hey, it's me, Kathy. I'm going in on page three, and I'm starting from the bottom or whatever, FYI all, you know, if anybody's in there. And somebody will email you back if so. But, you know, there's a lot of people working at different times, so I'm not really worried about that. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. I have a quick question. They're organ they're right now the list is by date. Can you list it by station? I'm um, looking to Jacob. Could you just filter for station? I mean, you can, you can see uh, all the filings on a particular station. Um, I'm just going to click on the states um, link at the sort of the states uh, button at the top of the page. Um, and if I scroll down to Pennsylvania, um, and I just click on see all stations in Pennsylvania. Um, and you can all do also do this by TV market, so you should yeah. be able to see Philly. But um, um, if, if I then just click on KYW. Um, yeah, there you go. You'll, you'll, you'll just see the KYW ads. Okay. So if you want to adopt a station, that's a good way to do it. And that is actually Jacob's recommendation because, as, as, you know, as I showed you, different stations have different forms. So right. um, for speed to, you know, to market, you're, you just get used to one form and, and work on that. And, and, um, you know, and if you have questions about a form, call the station um, mm -hmm. because they're going to know better. Um, and remember that these are public documents and it is your right. Um, prior to the uh, online upload, um, you had the right to walk into that station and demand to see the paper file. Right. So if anybody hassles you, ask for the station manager. And if that doesn't get you satisfaction, email or call me because I, uh, this is something that is uh, required. Uh, by federal law, and uh, you know you should be able to get this information and get it from the horse's mouth. You right. know uh, the stations know their forms better than anybody else, and then share it with the listserv. Okay. Share what you've discovered. But um, part of this is understanding what your rights are as a citizen, and that's your right. 
Right. Okay. Thanks again. Thanks for your help. Thank you. Thank you. And I really want to thank our friends at the Committee of 70 for organizing this. Um, it's, uh, it's really great to have people um, who are from your community who are interested in this kind of work and who know good folks like you. So, um, so thanks to uh, Committee of 70 and thanks to all of you for taking so much time out of your day. Okay. Thank you. Bye -bye. All right. Take care. Hope to hear Thanks, from Kathy. you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.